Love it. Okay, so uh, my friends, last year at this time, uh, many of you received invitation to, a Chris, uh, to attend the Christmas party, right? Christmas parties or Christmas concerts or, or family celebrations. Uh, in fact, some of you probably had a difficult time coordinating all the schedules and, and all the events. Well, I suspect this Christmas is different for you, isn't it? Uh, it's different for me. It's different for my family. Uh, the number of invitations uh, we received has drastically been diminished. Uh, no invitations to attend Christmas concerts, no invitations to get together with neighbors, no invitations to come together for, for other party, for Christmas parties. Okay, now, now I, I know there are invitations to virtual events, but they feel different, don't they? Yeah, they do. Uh, do you miss the invitations? Is it nice to be invited? <laughs> it's nice to be invited, isn't it? Well, I know I missed the invitations, I'll tell you that. Um, and I started thinking about invitations this week because the text in Isaiah chapter 55 has several invitations. And Isaiah 55 is the next chapter in our message series on the book of Isaiah. We started the book of Isaiah some time back, actually before the pandemic started. And we've been going through the book of Isaiah, exploring it. And we've reached chapter 55. Uh, you can see all the previous messages, by the way, on our YouTube channel. And if they are helpful to you, would, I would really appreciate it so much if you would subscribe and click the church bell to turn on your no notification. But for today, today we are covering Isaiah 55, which is filled with invitations. And what an appropriate way to celebrate the fourth Sunday of Advent. At this Christmas time, uh, God, through the prophet Isaiah, is sending us invitations. And I'm certain that God has something very special prepared for you today. So let's dive into our text. Follow along in your own Bibles. And by all means, feel free to comment below or participate in our virtual room live chat. That's totally acceptable. Um, every Sunday morning, by the way, you can participate in our virtual room if you, if you are not able to, to gather together. Uh, you can find that link on our website, agapechurch.life. And I think that's all the logistics you guys need to know at the moment. All right, let's get started. Here is Isaiah chapter 55, invitations. Verse one, come all of you who are thirsty, come to the waters and you who have no money, come buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without cost. Why spend money on, on what is not bread and your labor on what does not satisfy? Listen, listen to me and eat what is good and you will delight in the richest affair. Give ear and come near me. Listen, listen, that you may live. I will have an everlasting covenant with you. My faithful love promised to David. See, I have made him a witness to the prophets, a ruler and commander of the people. Surely you will summon many nations you know not and, not, and nations that you do not know will come running to you because of the Lord your God, the Holy One is Israel, for he has endowed you with splendor. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them turn to the Lord and he will have mercy on them and to our God, for he will freely pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Near are your ways, my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. As the rain and snow come down from heaven, and do not return to it without watering the earth, and making it bud and flourish, so that it yields seed for the sow and bread for the eater. So is my word that goes out of my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but it will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. 
and you will go out in joy and be led forth in peace. The mountains and hills will burst in song before you and all the trees of the field will clap their hands. Instead of the thorn bush, you will grow the juniper and instead of the briars, the myrtle will grow. This will be for the Lord's renown, for an everlasting sign that will endure forever. Invitations, invitations. Now, in the first seven verses, I counted at least seven invitations. Let's cover them quickly. And here's the first one. The first one, the first invitation is to eat and drink from the Lord. Uh, the offer of bread and water is symbolic of the basic necessities of life. Uh, they are a representation of, of stability and, and security. Jesus of Nazareth fulfilled these prophetic words. As a matter of fact, in the Gospel of John, in chapter 6, Jesus says, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will not, never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Do you see that? Do you see that stability, that security? That's the first invitation. The second invitation is similar to the first, but it goes beyond the basic necessity. Verse 1 also mentions wine and milk, much more than just bread and water, right? The second invitation is an invitation to delight in the delicious food that God provides. Eat what is good, the scripture says right here. Eat what is good. You will delight in the richest affair. That's verse 2. What are these delicious delights? Well, I'll come back to that in just a moment. So hold that, hold that thought. We'll definitely come back to it. The third invitation is to life. Think of it as an invitation to participate in the, in, the, in the zest of life, a life worth living. Verse 3 records God's invitation is, come to me, listen that you may live, listen that you may live. The encouragement here to listen is repeated over and over and over in our text. As a matter of fact, verse 2 has it twice. It has, listen, listen to me, eat what is good. And then verse 3 has it twice also. It says, give ear and come to me. Listen that you may live. Give ear is the same as listen. This means that listening is very, very important to participate in the everlasting life that God offers. We know it's everlasting because God makes a fourth invitation. And the fourth invitation is part of an everlasting covenant which results in splendor. <laughs> Imagine that you are being invited to a covenant that is everlasting and results, of, results in splendor. The best part of the covenant is that it, in, it is ensured by the Most High God. See, when you enter in a contract, you want to make sure that whoever guarantees the contract is stable and able to fulfill it. Let me ask you this. Have you ever had a gift certificate from a business that went out of business? <laughs> How much is that gift certificate worth? Well, not much, right? Zero, probably. The covenant blessing happens in, in verse 5. Because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has endowed you with splendor. See, God guarantees the covenant. He's the guarantor. Now, there's three more invitations in verses 6 and 7. The fifth invitation is to seek the Lord while he may be found. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Because this implies there is a limited time. There is a limited time. See, Apostle Matthew records a parable that Jesus told in Matthew 25, by the way. At the time... At that time, Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven will be like 10 virgins who took 10 uh, their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. That's, that's a, a custom that used to be done in, in, in ancient Middle East. Uh, they would welcome the bridegroom. And five of these virgins were foolish and five were wise. The foolish ones took their lamps, but did not take any oil with them. The wise ones, however, took oil in jars along with their lamps. <laughs> well, you know what happened, right? Needless to say, when the bridegroom arrives, the five were ready, while the other five ran out of oil. 
while they were on their way to buy oil, the bridegroom arrived. The virgins who were ready went in with him to the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later on, they came, those that went to buy oil, and they said, Lord, Lord, open the door for us. But he replied, truly, I tell you, I don't know you. And then Jesus ends the parable with some sample words. Here's what he said. Therefore, keep watch, because you do not know the day or the hour. You do not know the day or the hour. None of us do. So seek the Lord while he may be found. Yes, there is a limited time. The sixth invitation is to call on the Most High God while he is near. Don't neglect the times when you sense God's call. If you do, your heart gets harder and harder each time. Listen, open your mind. Open your mind and, and heart and call on God. He's asking you to call on him. You really need an open mind to be able to call on the Lord today by the very fact that you can hear me, that you can hear this message, the Lord is nearby. Right now is the time. Call on him. <laughs> Just like you call a friend. And the last invitation in verse 7 is to turn away from the wrong path. And turn to the Lord well, where there is mercy. It's like somebody saying, hey, come this way. Come this way. Don't go the wrong way over there. Just come this way. Stop going in the wrong direction. And make your way back to the right trail. When you do, instead of judgment, you will find mercy. Why? Well, that's because God's way of doing things is different than the way people do things. Which brings me to the next point. It's not just invitations, but there's a way or the way, the way of God. Now, in ancient worldview, in ancient worldview, the gods were seen as having the same um, human traits, human vices, and impulses, except they were really, really powerful and, and, and immortal. Well, sort of immortal. See, the gods, when you look at the ancient worldview, the gods at the time were jealous and prideful and capricious and, and, and lustful. They created, according to their mythological texts, they created human beings to serve and obey them. They were the slaves. Humanity was slave to the gods. By contrast, however, Isaiah paints a drastically different picture of the Most High God, Yahweh. Yahweh, his perspective, his understanding, his motives, his desire, his methods, his methods are far above those of human beings. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts, says God. See, the contrast between humanity and God cannot be overstated. And yet, and yet, at Christmas, what do we celebrate? At Christmas, we celebrate God becoming a human being. In a manger in Bethlehem, Jesus was born of a virgin named Mary. She was just a girl. She was as surprised as her fiancé, Joseph, uh, was to, to learn that the Most High God would invade the earthly realm to rescue his people from the power of darkness. <laughs> but what a strange way to start a rescue operation. What a strange way to start this massive kingdom operation. He came to serve, not to be served. He came to offer life by dying. The word that created the world, the word that created the universe became flesh. This is the same word mentioned in our verses here in Isaiah in verses 10 and 11 of our text. Uh, his ways are higher than our 
ways. As the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return to it without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater. So is my word that goes out of, from my mouth, says the Lord. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purposes for what I sent it. See, God's word is in its very nature, in its very being productive. By its DNA, if you will, it produces results. God's word produces results. Isaiah used an interesting analogy, that of rain and snow. And the rain and snow are essential to life. In the precipitation weather patterns, uh, we learn from science that there's a, a permeation, there's patience, there's purpose. I have observed in the pages of scripture that God's ways often involve a permeation, a, a patience, and purpose. Listen, God invites you today, God invites me today, God invites you today to something absolutely amazing. It, it, there's a solid foundation, a, a life everlasting, a deep relationship with him and a new path. Because his ways are above our ways, we can't always anticipate the route that he takes us through. But in the journey, but in this journey, as whatever unknown is ahead of us, in this journey, we can sense God's word permeating and transforming every aspect of our life. With patience, he offers us a new purpose, one that was there all along. One was there all along from the moment he created us. He had a purpose for us. God's word, who became a baby, and we celebrate his birth at Christmas, has accomplished and will continue to accomplish the purpose for which he came. Let me tell you, Isaiah 55 ends with a promise. The promise. So we have the invitation, we have the way, and now we have the promise. In verses 20, uh, I'm sorry, 12 and 13, God promises joy. He promises peace. They're singing. There's exuberant celebration. Talking about clapping of hands. And, and it says that this will be for the Lord's renown for an everlasting sign that will endure forever. God's sign and his prophetic words are often veiled in mystery before they come to pass. And then obvious after the fact. Uh, do you feel, let me ask you this, do you feel your life has sometimes uh, has thorn bushes or briars in it at times? Well, the text says that instead of thorn bush will grow the juniper, and instead of barriers, the myrtle will grow. The myrtle is, is this amazing plant that produces a fra fragrant uh, perfume. And let me tell you, that's what the word of the Lord does. That's the promise. Now, do you remember the second invitation I mentioned earlier? I told you I'd come back to it, right? Well, in our text, in verse 2, the second invitation is an invitation to delight in the delicious food that God provides. It says, eat what is good, and you will delight in the richest affairs. What is the richest fair? Well, remember that God's ways are higher than our ways. Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 quotes from passages in Isaiah when he wrote, What no eye has seen, what no ear has heard, and what no human mind has conceived, the things God has prepared for those who love him. Do you like surprise parties? <laughs> I'm talking about the good kind, of course, right? Surprise parties. Well, I think the promise of God is a little bit like that. It's like a surprise party. God's invitation is extended to you. The creator of the universe, who is far above us, has made a way for us to be with him. If that's the case, what is your next step? What is your next step? What are you to do? Well, generally invitations require a response. Are you gonna, will you come to the party? Circle yes or no. When I've shown you today God's invitations, 
And let me tell you, Christmas time is, is a time of invitations. And I believe God is inviting you right now. It's also a time of gift giving. God's gift to humanity is the person of Jesus of Nazareth. Through his birth, his life, his ministry, his death, and his resurrection, we are invited. We are invited to anchor ourselves onto a new solid foundation of faith. We are invited to accept a new life everlasting based on the intimate relationship with Jesus. And we are invited to start on a new path, a new beginning. Therefore, the first step is to accept God's invitation. Say yes to God and let him know that you want to be part of it. Now, this first yes might be your very first one ever to God. Brilliant, wonderful, fantastic. Now, this, there might be other yeses to God. God might be asking you to do something new. God might be asking you to, to be involved in a certain way. God might be opening your eyes to the people around you and saying, you have to do something about that. And saying yes to God is the first step. You're saying yes to his invitation. The second step is actually to go where you have been invited. <laughs> Just go. Go where you've been invited. This includes reading God's word, spending time with his people. You are invited into God's word. You are invited with his people. What better way to do that than to join our Agape Online community? If you're not part of that, by all means, do that. It's on social media or to participate on Sunday mornings. Uh, or to engage in an uh, agape practice group. Listen, the goal of the agape practice group is to increase your biblical knowledge, to help you apply that knowledge to whatever is happening around you right now in your life, and then to practice a new lifestyle, a new way, the way of Jesus. And the agape practice groups will start up again after the holidays. Uh, and and we'll, we'll, we'll start again in January. So you can't accept God's invitation and then show, not show up to the party. I mean, what's that like? Oh, yeah, 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 I'm, I'm coming to the party. You reserve a spot for me. And then there's a no-show. It's not done. Accept the invitation. Show up. Show up to the party. And then the third step is to invite others. Listen. God's church is not some exclusive club reserved only for good people. All right, who's good people? Me? <laughs> no. <laughs> Everyone is welcome. Everyone is encouraged to continue with their apprenticeship to Jesus. You are invited. You are welcome. We are all work in progress. And no one, no one has arrived. Look around you. Look around you. Whose life can you impact for good today? Whose life can you impact for good today? Who can use some encouragement and some selfless love? Extend an invitation. Uh, maybe on Wednesday. Listen, if you don't know about Wednesday, here's what's happening. We plan to have a Christmas candlelight service at 7 p.m. Central Time. Where? Right here in Waukesha. And, and if you're not nowhere near Waukesha, which I totally understand, some of you are not, um, you can definitely join the virtual room. I got the virtual room. But we'll put, post more information about the, about the comments uh, below. So here's my question. Are you going to accept God's invitation? Are you going to show up? And will you invite others to participate with you? Who will you invite? Respond to God's invitation. Show up and invite others. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, I pray that your Holy Spirit would overwhelm us. They would nudge us towards those first steps, the first step of saying yes to the invitation. Bring us, Lord, give us that, the courage to step out in faith and, and pray the yes prayer towards you. And Father, help us now, not only just to, just to say yes to the prayer, but help us to follow it through. Help us to show up. <laughs> help us just to be there, to be present, to be engaged. And open our eyes, Lord, that we may see those around us, those that need you, and then we may have the, the insight to be able to invite them to be part of it. Father, at this Christmas, I pray that your Holy Spirit would be with those whose hearts are hurting, 
who are experiencing sadness, those who are ex have experienced loss. And Father, I pray that we as an agape church, that we may be your hands and feet, that we may be able to expand your kingdom. And I pray, Father, for all these donations that have been given, whether they've been financial donations or, or in-kind physical donations, I pray, Father, that those that will receive them, they will be blessed and benefit from them, that you would be honored, that your name would be praised. And Father, at this Christmas time, draw us one step closer to you. That is our desire. Transform us, our minds and, and hearts. And I pray this in the precious name of the Lord Jesus. Amen.